COVID-19 is going to have the unprecedented effect on human society, so to speak. Not just because it's a virus we don't, we are not immune to, but also it's going to strain our healthcare system so freely at this moment, which it has never been before. Now let's talk about what we can do about it. So this is my preliminary drawings of what a mechanical ventilator should be when it is needed to be assembled in a larger quantity. So most of these patients are going to be intubated and they are going to need a mechanical ventilator. Now the problem here is we do not have that much mechanical ventilator available. Even if we try to produce it, we don't have enough materials to produce it. There are not many electronic circuits available to produce it. We do not have simply the capability to mass produce it to the levels we are going to need it in the coming future. So what can be done about it? Uh, so until recently I thought about it and at first it was not looking like a simple task because most of the mechanical ventilator drones which I came up with did require some kind of um, circuit, some kind of computerized method to it. Until recently when I saw a YouTube video where people actually have used a pulley system and um, uh, just a wheel kind of motor system to press down embo uh, bags so that inspired me. Now the problems with the ambu bank is you do not control the outflow which you are going to see in the video which will follow this video. So in order to make this a closed system because this is important if this system is not closed that means unlike a uh, uh, ambu bag which has an uh, outflow valve. If this system is not closed, the healthcare worker will be at risk because obviously we uh, do not want healthcare workers to be infected by this COVID-19. So what we basically have here is a cylinder uh, which could be either made up of a glass or plastic as long as it is able to Oh, smartly fit with this disc. This disc is like a piston. Now there will be a, a stationary rod uh, following this piston which will rest on it. Now this rod will be attached to this disc which will able to rotate by a revolving rod which will connect this stationary rod to the uh, disc. So basically when this disc will move either by the small motor or by a big motor which can uh, power three or four patients at a time. This stationary rod will be connected by a moving rod to this moving disc and so when this disc will move the rod will move and the stationary rod will move in turn. Now this diameter will uh, uh, show that how much moment this piston will likely to make and the volume uh, of that piston which uh, we are going to see like how it's going to move up and down and force this air into the patient so that will be calculated by our uh, good old formula of cylinder which will be pi r square h now as I was saying if this was another shape like a rectangular then obviously the formula will change and so you will need to compensate it like that so so pi r square h so here h will be the diameter of the big disc and r would be the radius of this uh, this uh, cylinder now um, this will be the tidal volume of the patient the respiratory rate will be decided by the rotation per minute of this disc so two important parameters we will able to control. 
one a tidal volume and one would be the respiratory rate now dep depending whether the patient need uh, hyperventilation uh, or the patient need more tidal volume of its child then within the patient which will be needing a lower tidal volume we will able to uh, deal with that by just altering either a diameter of this desk or by changing the rotation per minute um, of this desk so simply by changing the disc either its diameter or its speed we will able to control two most important variables here now third variable would be the oxygen saturation which will be difficult in this scenario because most of the time it's like a computerized system but what we can manually do is have the patient's uh, pulse oximeter attached to the patient and see if this is blood oxygenation is falling you can attach the oxygen cylinder and give the oxygen which you want to the patient so now you have seen uh, the, the whole working of this uh, mechanical ventilator which I have come up with just uh, try to uh, use instead of amber bank a closed system which I think is very important for healthcare workers because being a doctor, I, I know that the, the frontline workers need to be protected, not just by mask and goggles and personal protective stuff, because those stuffs, even though are important, they do not really make the chances of getting virus zero nullified. Basically, what we have here are, let me just pause it for a second. Uh, what we have basically this is the piston which uh, will be used to push the air inside the patient who is obviously intubated here uh, right now um, the covid 19 virus which is um, involving the upper as well as the lower um, respiratory tract uh, in this patient uh, which um, would most likely to go out if we are just using mask or something so that's why the patient has to be intubated you cannot just uh, put a mask on it because no matter what kind of mask you may put on there will be some kind of leakage there so non-invasive ventilation mechanical ventilation is not really recommended and that is also being said on a lancet uh, report so anyway so intubation intubated patient which would be done by anesthetist or by the critical care worker or by you know, emergency healthcare worker whoever will be or the paramedical staff whoever is trained to do it using uh, laryngoscope and other things so anyway so once the intubation has been done uh, the airway has been secured uh, there will be a, a small air balloon would be inflated uh, around here uh, within the trachea of the patient and uh, on that the mechanical ventilation ventilator will be attached uh, one is inflow one is outflow inspiratory and the expiratory tubing so here in COVID-19 this becomes especially important where the outflow tube will go out if you are just using bag and mask uh, to ventilate the patient or other things it's most likely uh, that thing is going to get released in the environment by the outflow uh, valve from the bag and mask and uh, healthcare workers uh, no matter what kind of mask they are wearing even if it is n95 uh, there will be the covid19 uh, virus will be outside uh, you need to clear it up by by using uh, negative pressure chambers uh, vacuum chambers now the most of the icus um, in especially in developing countries may not be equipped with that kind of uh, uh, you know airflow with the negative uh, chambers and stuff so that just adding on a lot of cost or uh, specialized rooms and all those things which may not be uh, available in the uh, surge uh, when pandemic surge happens in the country which hits the uh, healthcare system like like a waves of tsunami 
uh, these patients who have this virus, those expiratory tubing, um, and this diagram, this is like a, uh, uh, just a, um, one of the um, ways which can be done, which I have imagined, uh, could be um, gotten into a chamber which will have uh, two valves. Uh, the first valve I have put here, which is a, which is for inspiration. So whatever oxygen has been given, do not um, recede back into the chamber again. And uh, this is the valve two, where the direction of that valve is towards the outflow. And once the COVID-19 has been passed from this, it will not be able to turn back and go in. At the same time, uh, this uh, chamber, outflow chamber, will have this uh, small UV lighting there, which will uh, kill this, uh, hypothetically will kill this COVID-19 virus, and it disappears, cool. So, so this is the working module, how it can be done, that will be uh, it. So, how this uh, piston mechanism is working, we have already seen in previous part of this video, uh, so I will not uh, dwell on to explain it. So this is the oxygen cylinder which we can be used uh, if the O2 saturation of the patient is falling. Um, most of the state-of-the-art mechanical ventilators, the O2 pressure and the O2 um, composition can be selected, but uh, if you are trying to plan the ventilator in a short span like with it in um, uh, you know in a shorter time and all uh, you will uh, likely need something uh, more workable and more uh, producible uh, ventilators uh, uh, which do not use a lot of resources from companies mass production of this thing has to be there otherwise we are not going to tide over this crisis because the patient of covid 19 are going to need the mechanical ventilation for a longer period of time maybe two weeks maybe more than two weeks now the problem here is for those 15 days this mechanical ventilator will be blocked for that patient no other person will be able to use it. That means not only the another COVID-19 patient, but also the other patients with other emergencies. For example, may it be the trauma case, may it be the diabetic uh, ketoacidosis case, may it be uh, just a child uh, having uh, uh, hypoxia, or a person with carbon monoxide poisoning, whatever that thing may be, those people will not get mechanical ventilator. Now, just because we have COVID-19 pandemic, that doesn't mean all other diseases have taken break. They have not. Rather, other diseases will pop up because comorbidity will be increased with COVID-19. Other thing is, this um, virus is going to affect elderly people much more than other age group. That being said, elderly people have already have a weak immune system and they are more prone to be needing this ventilator. Now problem is, when you are going to triage the patient, the elderly are the ones who are going to get left out. If you have a young patient who has a, a, coronavirus thing disease or another disease and an old patient with the same thing you are going to choose the younger patient that may sound however unethical as as it might be the problem here is the only way to avoid these difficult circumstances for healthcare workers and to make them do the impossible decisions of who will live and who will die, you need to make this 
ventilators available at the mass scale. Now, if you make this complicated by putting a circuit or a computer, that may take more time, which we do not have. Now, there might be other companies who might be having better ideas to come up with this. My request is to come up with this faster. Even the individuals who have ideas, I would just say to put it online, put it on a website, just draw it and, you know, something will come up. Write to your peers or your officials to, to, to let them know that you have some ideas too. Thing is, if we don't act here in a unity, and more and more people do not submit their ideas and work on this, this might be the crisis which will break us, us as a society itself. We have already stopped going out. We are not working. That will have our biggest economical crisis which we have ever faced as a humanity. And no matter how silly one's ideas might sound in the beginning, we need to keep this discussion going. To have our ventilators, to have masks, to have personal protective equipments, to have proper hospitals, to, have, to increase the capacity of healthcare systems. COVID-19 is like a wake-up call. So, ventilators is what we are going to need more and more. And in order to get through it uh, and to have a mass production, we need it simplified. So this is one of the simplified uh, drawings I would like to present and um, anyone out there who wants to make it uh, feel free to make it um, this is not a patented stuff and it shouldn't be either because this is uh, really a crisis of our, our times no matter what vaccine no matter what drug we come up with no matter what ventilator we come up with it cannot be patented because this is what is required by humanity and we need to do our part in it so let me know if you have any more ideas um, engineers in you might want to make it into uh, working model and i will be more than happy to assist you in any ways possible do write to me i will put my email id down I will put link to the other videos which I have seen and found uh, really informative and we need to keep this discussion going and we need to involve our um, politicians and our leaders in it so that they get aware of the crisis and act accordingly. Laws like Defense Production Act should be there in all countries. Thank you. Keep the discussion going.